Hello and welcome to my second vlog about my clinical trial adventures. Uh, yesterday I went up to Adam Brooks to meet with um, Professor Coles and Karen, the research nurse. It started with me going in to sit and talk to Professor Coles and he asked me again if I wanted to do the trial, which I said, yes, I would like to. And did I have any more questions? And um, I didn't because um, I felt now that everything had been answered. I'm sure there will be more questions popping up uh, all the time. Um, I try to make a note of them so I do remember to ask them at a later point. Um, but um, so he gave me a bunch of papers that I had to sign an initial. And they were very, fairly straightforward things that you would imagine. So it was things like, um, yes, I am taking part in this trial. Yes, I want to donate the, my blood to, uh, to the research. Um, my GP knows what's going on. Um, you have to follow certain rules according, well, one thing is like you're not allowed to get pregnant during it, so you have to use contraception and all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, there's nothing in there that's weird or strange. It's very straightforward. They also give, ask you if you want to um, donate blood for other purposes that they could have a look at. So that was fine. Um, so initialed all of that, put my horrible signature on the uh, paper. Always get jokes about my signature because it's really squally and horrible and people say that I should be a doctor. Uh, I wish I had the smarts to be a doctor, but I clearly have the signature. That probably doesn't go very far in the medical profession. Anyway, <laughs> so that was all fine. And then I said goodbye to Professor Coles. And he said, well, actually I did ask him um, what could go wrong for me not to go on the trial um, because of having these tests today. And he said that when they take your blood, if they notice that you would have um, kidney failure or liver failure or that type of stuff, then you can't go on the trial. I would like to know <laughs> if I have that anyway, so which I hopefully don't. Um, but yeah, so he, as far as he was concerned, he said you are on the trial. But you know, if anything strange would show up in the blood works, we would let you know. So they said that they would let me know by Thursday. Um, so as soon as I know, they're going to send me an email. And then the next step will be to go, go up there and have more kind of tests done and then get the medication. But now I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what happened in this one. So after I did that, I went and had my blood taken, which is fine. Nobody likes having their blood taken, I don't think. Um, but yeah, it wasn't too horrible. And then they took my weight and my measurement. Um, and uh, I went to see uh, this assessor who is going to see me every time and she was doing these, yeah, the EDSS type style things. Um, and they were very similar to what you have done to you every time you've seen your neurologist. Um, and she did a sight test that was a little bit interesting because I did feel like my, um, my lettuce was jumping up and down a little bit. But, Apart from that, I think most of the whole um, test was fine. I did point out um, that my um, right hand side, well, mostly my leg, um, has got a little bit less sensitivity in it than, than um, my right hand one does. It tends to be the one that gets affected by MS, so sometimes it feels a bit weak, um, especially in the summer when it's really hot, and yesterday it was very, very hot. Um, so yeah, that leg does feel a little bit funny at times. Um, but yeah, that was all fine with those bits. Then she went through and asked me about other MS symptoms. So like, do you suffer from fatigue? Is it moderate, mild, or really severe? I said it's moderate. Um, I can't function, but I have days when it's bad. Um, and then like cognition and uh, blood and bowel things. Um, anything else? 
No, it was sort of fairly straightforward MS type symptoms. There might be some bits that I'm forgetting, but um, I basically just listed what um, had been wrong with me and uh, in the past what symptoms I'd had and things like that. Oh, and I did talk to Professor Coles about that as well because he did ask me when my last few relapses had been. And I've been very lucky since starting on my disease modifying drug and I haven't had any relapses. So I've been relapse free for over two years now. I don't want to jinx anything, but yes, so that's good. Um, and then that was pretty much it. They told me because I, oh yes, I haven't pointed this out. So when you go to these meetings, um, when they take your blood, uh, they ask you to fast first. Um, so they say no food or drink, just water uh, from midnight to after the tests. Um, so my appointment was nine o'clock in the morning, so it wasn't too bad. My stomach was growling a little bit, but I was so, so missing the coffee because I'm a total coffeeholic. Um, and if I'd been awake for, oh, well, I don't know how many hours was it, three hours, I would have had probably at least at least two cups of coffee. So that was my f first stop before I uh, caught a train back there was to, go, to go, and, go and have a coffee. And then I felt much happier. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was pretty much it. It wasn't um, horrible, it was all fine. They're very nice there, so they're also easy to talk to. I did find myself being really, really tired in the evening, yesterday night. Um, some of it will be because of the travel, because I always get quite tired when I have to do a commute. Um, and I suppose like the anticipation and waiting and all that sort of stuff as well kind of brings, brings stress and anxiety and whatnot out, and that can always raise the fatigue. But then also because it was so hot yesterday, it was over 28 degrees, and when I came back into the office it was baking in here as well. So um, I felt a little bit like my whole brain had been fried. Um, which I guess when I'm having an MRI scan next week, I could find out if it has happened. Hopefully not. Um, hope, you know, all fingers crossed that they will let me on the trial. And then I shall do the next update after the next appointment, which will be a long, long day at Addenbrooke's because um, I will have um, an MRI scan and evoke the visual evoked potential. So it's the one where they put all the electrodes on your head and then you sit and watch something that you think, what's happening? Uh, nothing's happening. Why am I looking at Is this some secret IQ test and I'm failing it badly? Uh, that was maybe just me. That was <laughs> how I felt when I had that done before. Um, you do look like you're in some sci-fi film with all that stuff on top of your head, though. Um, watch too much sci-fi films. <laughs> anyway, so that's... Um, plus more kind of blood and things is taken and they're also going to give me the medication then but I'm not starting to take it until the following week because they want to know the results of the MRI scan um, so I suppose with the MRI scan they will look at the amount of um, um, scarring I have got um, he already counted the scarring for me before because he was sitting looking at my old MRI scan which was done earlier this year I think um, and I think there were seven scars that might be wrong, but I think it was about seven scars. So I guess they then want to compare that because it might, since that scan was done, there might be more scarring. I don't know. I haven't had any relapses, but as we know, what's going on down there doesn't always display in symptoms. So yeah, so that's it, and I shall hopefully get back to you. Bye.